Hello and welcome to Yoga Flow. My name is Milani Vivillier and in this class I would like to share with you some techniques to co-activate the muscles around your joint complexes, most specifically focusing on the lumbar joint and the thoracic joint complexes in your spine and aligning the body in that way from the inside outward towards the periphery. So yoga, the word yoga means union and essentially we want to start that union by um, bringing a unity of the muscles around all our major joint complexes and we want to both strengthen the joint complexes by really plugging the bones back into the joints but at the same time also open up the energy flow by creating more space in the joints and so in this way when we work with our physical body and the union of opposite energies in the physical body then in that way we can also start to integrate union in our minds and in our deeper subtle energetic body so the props you're going to need for this class is a belt two blocks and a blanket and um, to begin we're going to bring our two blocks together to sit on them so this just gives us a little bit of space so that the hip joint can more easily open up and we're going to begin by bringing one heel in front of the other heel and then drawing them quite close in and then sitting right at the front edge of your um, blocks so that the knees descend downward and then take your buttock flesh and move your buttock flesh backward. If you feel any strain in your knees, then what you can do um, is take your blanket, perhaps you have another blanket if you have strain in both your knees, and you can just roll it up and bring it underneath your shin bones so that it supports the move, uh, movement down of your knees. So you can have a blanket under both of them. So once you're in your comfortable seat, then bring your palms together at your heart space. And as you do that, feel that you bring your shoulder blades into your back body to open and expand your heart. So feel your whole chest open up. And then try to keep that openness, but bring the upper buttock flesh down towards the, the earth and bring your pubic bone up towards your breastbone and feel how that brings your lower abdomen inward and upward. And then just softly close your eyes, relax the tops of your shoulders away from your ears, relax your throat, relax your jaw and your tongue and soften your eyes. Align the crown of your head directly above your perineum, your pelvic floor. And we'll open with one chant of Om. Exhale completely. And then inhale deeply. But to begin, we're going to sit up with two blocks at the front edge of your mat and make a loop in your belt that is about the size from your inner armpit to your inner armpit. Maybe a tiny little bit bigger, so to the insides of your deltoids. So that when we practice Chaturanga Dandasana a little later, you will have the belt 
around your elbows, above your elbows, and bringing the belt in so that it moves your front ribs into your body. So for the moment, we'll leave the belt, but make sure that you've got your belt set up. And um, just observe while I demonstrate, and then we'll, we'll do some rounds together. So essentially, Uddiyana Bandha is a lifting. Uh, automatically, the pelvic floor will also lift. That, that's Mula Bandha. But uh, um, it's a lifting of the lower abdominal muscles just above your pubic bone, moving those muscles inward and upward. So moving it towards your spine, but also up in the direction of your chest. And the way we do it um, during this exercise is by holding our breath out and creating the muscular action in the chest in the, with the intercostal muscles as if we are taking a very large inhalation. So essentially, we're trying to expand the chest as if we're taking a large inhalation, but while we're holding the breath out. And because there's no air coming in, the abdomen naturally gets sucked up underneath the rib cage. So um, I will demonstrate what this looks like, and then we'll try a few rounds together. So I'll lift my shirt so that you can see what happens um, in my lower abdominal area. So the stance is strongly into your feet, drawing your thighs up, keeping your spine lengthened and bending forward from your hips and then bringing your hands down. Now it might be that when you land your hands that you feel your spine is rounded. In that case, bring your blocks to very higher height. So you see what works comfortably for you. And we'll start on an exhalation, exhaling through the mouth, then creating the muscular action in the intercostal muscles as if we're taking a full inhalation. Hold it for a little while, feeling the massage of that lower abdominal area, and then releasing it. And it looks like this, keeping the neck in line with your spine. And then returning to normal breathing. So if you would like to join me now, I'm coming to stand with your hands on your hips, feet strongly rooted, and then inhale, open your chest, keep your shoulder blades into your back body, fold forward from your hips, keep your spine in one straight line, bring your hands down, move your blocks higher if you need it, neck in line with your spine, Collarbones open. So to begin, just take a normal deep breath. And then on your next exhalation, exhale through your mouth, stick your tongue out. Create, keep your breath out. Create muscular action as if you're going to inhale. Hold it for as long as you can and then return to normal, natural breathing. Again, check that your legs are strong, your spine is in one straight line, neck in line with your spine. Exhale fully through your mouth, stick your tongue out. Keep your breath out, create muscular action as if you're going to inhale. Turn to normal breathing. One more time. Check that your legs are strong. Check that your spine is straight. Exhale through your mouth. Hold your breath out. Create the muscular action as you're inhaling. Turn 
to your normal breathing. And keeping that lower abdominal connection, so the area above your uh, pubic bone, draw it inward and upward. Bring your hands onto your hips and slowly come to stand up. Now, if you would like to, you can pause the video here and do a few more rounds on your own. It's extremely good for the digestive system and toning the abdominal muscles and very good also for your spine to protect your spine, to bring fluidity and both fluidity and strength to the spinal muscles. And essentially what you're doing is creating a lock um, around your lower abdomen, uh, around your lower back and your thoracic spine. So both parts of your spine really benefit from this action. So moving your blocks off your mat for the moment. Take your belt around your elbows, so above your elbow joint, and come to stand on all fours. Let the tail of your belt be in the middle. Make sure that your belt is fully secure. And then you're going to bring your hands ever so slightly forward. And we're going to start on the hands and the knees, connecting that Udiana Banda. So now you are breathing, so it won't be as deep a connection as you got when we were practicing Udiana Banda, but you still want to think of that inward movement towards the spine and the upward movement in the direction of your chest. Tuck your toes under and keep that lower abdominal area just above your pubic bone going inward and upward. And then from here, we're going to start with Chaturanga. The elbows move back. Your shoulder blades stay into your back body. Your collarbones stay open. And you're going to lie your front ribs over your belt. So that helps to remind you to keep your front ribs in. Lower abdomen in and up. Hold and breathe. And then release. So you can either stay with that variation and it will help you to really build the strength to finally start straightening the legs. Or in the next round, if you would like to, you can straighten your legs. So once again, keeping the length of your spine, lower abdomen inward and upward, keeping your collarbones open, shoulder blades into your back body, move your chest over, holding it there, Maybe straightening your legs or otherwise staying on your knees. And then release. And we'll try one more time. So either with your knees on the floor or straight legs. Lower abdomen in and up. Collarbones open. Chest forward. Either staying there looking slightly forward. Watch not to hang your head because that makes it very heavy. Strong legs. Front thighs to back thighs. Come a little bit forward onto your tippy toes and breathe. And then release. Well done. So once again, if you would like to practice that a little more, you can pause the video and you can just work on building that strength. After this, we are now going to start our flow and really incorporating all of these elements into the flow. Okay, so we're going to take this all into a flow, focusing on the center line of the body, especially co-activating the muscles around your lower spine and your thoracic spine, bringing those muscles together. So that when you align yourself, you're aligning from that stability on the inside, as well as that fluidity from the inside outward to the rest of your joint complexes. So the nine major joint complexes, just so that you can think of this co-activation plugging in and opening up are the wrists, the elbows, your shoulders, your um, three spinal bundles, your neck lock, your thoracic spine, your lower spine, your hips, your knees, your ankles.
So throughout the practice, see where you can plug in a little more, where you can open a little more. And both actions happen together. It's like you're plugging in and you're becoming spacious in all your joints. We'll start with some sun salutations. Palms of your hands together at your heart, lower abdomen inward and upward, that Uddiyana Bandha. Upper back is down, heart space open, lengthen your spine. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, dive your body forward. Bend your knees if you need to, get your hands flat onto the earth. Inhale, open your collarbones, spread your fingers wide. Exhale, either step or with your Uddiyana Bandha drawing your lower abdomen in and up, using that connection to make you light so that you can hop back into downward facing dog. Take a few breaths to arrive there. Lower abdomen in and up. Inhale, way forward. So in your plank position, now think about that belt you had around your elbows. Exhale, chakaranga dandasana, lower abdomen in and up. Inhale, roll over the toes, Uddhva Mukha Svanasana, drop your kneecaps, lower abdomen in and up. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Nice full deep breaths. You can walk your feet in a little bit. Try to press your heels down to the earth. Move your chest towards your thighs. Move your front thighs to your back thighs. Relax the back of your head, look between your big toes, keep your eyes still, quiet. Come up onto the balls of your feet, bend your knees. So lower abdomen in and up, look forward, press into your hands, claw your fingers into the earth. So you co-activate the muscles around your wrists. Inhale, hop. Exhale, fold. From the lower abdomen connection, inhale, reach your arms up. Samastiti. Once again, inhale. Think of that internal lift. Exhale, dive forward. So that lower abdomen moves in and up to give you space to fold. Inhale, open your collarbones, shoulder blades into your back body, hands flat, even if you need to bend your knees. Uddiyana Bandha, using that press into your hands, so it's like you're leaning forward to hop back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, land for a moment. Roll your inner upper arms out to create space between your neck and your shoulders. Inhale, come forward, lower abdomen in and up. Think of your belt around your elbows. And then keeping that internal connection, exhale, Chaturanga, come up to the tippy toes. Inhale, roll forward and up, lower abdomen in and up. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Nice long deep breaths. Again, you can walk your feet in a little bit so that you can press your heels down to the earth. Come up onto the balls of your feet. Keep your buttocks high up, bend your knees. So that lower abdominal area connects in and up. Look forward where you want to go. Press your fingertips into the earth like you're trying to make a closed fist with your hands, but your hands remain open. So you're activating your wrist muscles, shoulders rolling out, externally rotate your upper arms, and then from there, inhale, hop. Exhale to fold. Inhale. Reach your arms all the way up. And Samasthiti here. So you could pause the video here. Do a few more rounds like that on your own. Just integrating the parts of the information that you've um, absorbed right now. You can always redo the video and each time there might be a little more detail that you can take in. So if you would like to continue, do another three rounds of sun salutations or even more if you feel to really warm yourself up. Then after your last round of sun salutations, come into Padang Bhustasana, feet hip distance apart. 
you're holding on to your big toes with your first two fingers and your thumb. Inhale, lengthen forward, shoulder blades into your back body. You're welcome to bend your knees if you need to. Strongly roll your inner thighs back and feel how that helps you to get that pelvic floor and the lower abdomen to move towards your spine and up in the direction of your chest. On the next exhalation, draw your elbows out to the side, bringing your chest towards your thighs, and then breathing, crown of your head moving down to the earth. Accentuate that movement now of your inner thighs back, and then see, can you bring that lower abdominal area in towards your spine and in the direction of your chest. So you get that suction action of Uriyana Bandha. And you feel like you're aligning yourself from the inside out. As your elbows draw out to the side, make space between your neck and your shoulders. Draw up your kneecaps into your thighs. Draw your thighs up towards the sky. And then from there, keep the thighs active, but have a little tiny micro bend from the backs of your knees. So see, can you activate the fronts of your legs and the backs of your legs by drawing the thighs up and then making that small little micro bend from the backs of your knees. Inhale, lengthen, look up. Exhale there. Keep your legs strong and steady. Hands onto your hips, lower abdomen in and up. And then inhale with a straight spine, come up to standing. Okay, feet together. Und kat asana. Bending your knees. Touch your fingers to the earth. So that's how far you want your knees to remain bent. Lower abdomen inward and upward. Draw your arms up. Try to bring your arms behind your ears. Look straight ahead. Or if it's okay with your neck, look up. And full deep breaths. Lower abdomen in and up. Feel how you really get that connection. Upper back is down towards your heels. Exhale, release. Now, Utkatasana, twist. Bend your knees, inhale. Exhale, twist to your right side, hooking your left elbow over your right thigh, palms of your hands together, or opening up your arms, bringing your left arm down and your right arm up. Sit down, lower abdomen in and up. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, twisting to your left side, hooking that right elbow over the left knee, palms together, or opening up your arms, right arm down, left arm up. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, come to stand. Samastitihi. Karud Asana. So from here, reaching your arms out to the side, I'm going to mirror you. You're going to bring your right arm underneath your left arm, wrap your arms around each other. Even if you can't touch your hands, you just hold your hands there. Spread your shoulder blades wide. Keep the tops of your shoulders moving away from your ears downward, but lift your elbows up. So again, here comes a co-activation. Here comes opposite actions that integrate. And then draw your forearms away from your face. Bend your knees like Utkatasana, nice and deep, lower abdomen inward and upward. And then wrap your right leg, I'm mirroring you, around your left leg. If you can, hook the big toe around. If it feels too strong on your knee joints, then just cross the ankle over the thigh. See what works for your body. Find a steady place to gaze. 
Soften your eyes and breathe. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other. And then release. And on the other side, reach your arms out to the side. Bring your left arm underneath your right arm. Wrap your arms around each other. Once again, spread your shoulder blades wide. Tops of your shoulders away from your ears. Elbows lift up to the sky. Draw your forearms away from your face. Bend your knees like Ukatasana, lower abdomen in and up. So you're in that internal connection and you're going to align yourself from the inside out. Wrap your left leg, I'm mirroring you, around your right leg. Hook the big toe, or again taking the figure of four variation. See what works for your body. Sitting down nice and low, squeeze your thighs together. Find a steady place to gaze in front of you. Find your breath. And release. Good. We're just going to do a little bit of floor work before we go into another flow. So bringing yourself um, down to seated in Dandasana. Butter flesh back. So you're seated on your sitting bones. Hands beside you. Palms pressed into the earth. Push into your heels. Front thighs to back thighs. And then again, I'm going to mirror you. We're going to start with bending the left knee. So your right leg stays straight. Bending your left knee. Bring the sole of your left foot to your right inner thigh. Again, you can just move your buttock flesh. You want to make sure you're seated on your sitting bones. Press your left knee down to the earth. Reach your arms up. Turn your upper body over that right leg. Lower abdomen moving in and up, Uddiyana Bandha. So from there you are aligning yourself. Stay here, so you are reaching up with your fingertips, but at the same time you are still plugging your upper arm bones into your shoulder sockets. So yes, you are creating space in that shoulder joint, but you are also plugging back into the shoulder joint. Just feel what that does. And then maintaining the length in your spine, that lower abdomen in and up, Fold forward from your hip joint. If you feel that you need to bend your spine when you catch your hands around your foot, then rather use your belt to find more length so that the falling forward comes from your hip joint. If you are quite supple, you can catch the opposite hand. Otherwise, hold onto the foot, elbows out to the side, and then gazing towards your big toe as you fold yourself forward, lower abdomen inward and upward. Nice, full, spacious breaths. And inhale, lengthen, exhale, lift. Slowly bring yourself up. Keep your leg position. So again here it might be that you need a belt for Padi Vita um, Jhanu Sishasana. Just keep your loop in as it is. But take the rest of the belt and just loop it around your right foot to the inside. So from here you're going to bring your, left, your right hand onto your left knee, left hand behind you and come to twist. Make sure that your right sitting bone is still pressing down to the earth. Take a few moments in this twist first. Holding strongly onto that left knee with your right hand, reach your left arm up. And then with your full body weight, lean over towards your right foot. If you can, you're going to catch the pinky toe side of your right foot. Otherwise, use your belt and then lifting that left arm up to the sky and spiral your chest open up to the sky. Pulling with your right hand on that left knee to spiral open more. The back of your head moving towards your shin and that right shoulder blade to the inside of that right leg. Inhale, slowly come up. Release. 
knees forward, keeping that right leg straight. Now bend your left knee for Marichiyasana C, keeping the heel in front of the sitting bone, right leg active, left hand behind you, inhale, reach your right arm up, exhale, hook the elbow over your thigh, and then twist to your left side. If it's too much with the elbow over, you can also hold with your hand. Lift your lower abdomen in and up. See what that does as you spiral around the central axis of your body. Keeping your throat relaxed. Keep your eyes relaxed. Exhale, release. Well done. Straighten both your legs. Come back into Dandasana. And you can move your back flesh so you can really feel your sitting bones press down into the earth. And then we're going to change. So I'm mirroring you. Your left leg is going to stay straight. You're going to bend your right knee, sole of your right foot to your left inner thigh. Then if you need to adjust, if you feel that you just need that extra space for your sitting bones, and do that. Keep your right knee pressing down to the earth. Left front thigh to uh, back thigh, so that left leg stays super straight. Reach your arms up to the sky. Lengthen, especially into your middle fingers. Turn your upper body over that left leg. And then as you reach up with your arms, also plug your, your upper arms back into your shoulder sockets. So you're opening up into the shoulder joint, but you're also tuning back into that shoulder joint. Lower abdomen in and up. So you're using Uddiyana Bandha here. Keep your spine straight and then folding forward from your hips as you come over that left leg. Either holding onto the side of the foot or again, you just use your belt for whatever length you need. Elbows are drawing up to the side. And then with that length in your front spine, shoulder blades into your back body, there with that length, you fold over that left leg. Your lower abdomen keeps drawing in and up. You either moving the crown of your head towards your big toe if you're quite flexible, or you're looking towards your big toe, your left big toe, and you're moving in that direction. Inhale, slowly come up. Keep your leg position, and then bring your right hand behind you. Actually, before you do that, make sure you drape your belt around that left foot to the inside of the left foot. For Parivita Jhana Sijasana, right hand behind you. Hold on to your right knee with your left hand. Keep that left leg super strong and keeping that left sitting bone rooting down. Reach your right arm up and over your ear and then use your full body weight as you lean over. So you either catching the um, pinky toe side of your left foot with your right hand or you taking your belt and then from there lifting your right elbow up to the sky, spiral your chest open as you pull with that left hand on your right knee, trying to get that left shoulder blade to the inside of that left leg, right elbow lifts and the back of your head trying to go down towards your shin. Breathe space into those intercostal muscles. Inhale, slowly unravel. Stay with that left leg straight. Bend your right knee. Bring the heel in front of your right sitting bone. There's a little bit of space between your foot and your thigh. Marichi Asana C. Bring your right hand behind you. Reach your left arm up. And then hook that left elbow over your right knee to twist towards your right side. If you can't get the elbow over, just use your hand. Lift and lengthen your spine. See what happens when you bring that lower abdomen in and up, so that Uddiyana Bandha. So there's a suction action as you spiral and you twist, really refreshing your spinal cord. And exhale, release. And then back 
into Dandasana. So come up to stand and we're going to integrate all of those elements now into a flow where we're going to come into Parivita Trikonasana, the twisted triangle, and Parivita um, Ardha Chandrasana, the twisted half moon posture. So very much focusing on this lift of your lower abdomen, the area above your pubic bone, inward and upward to stay centered and this feeling of drawing your thighs up very strongly, keeping that action but then having a little bit of a micro bend from the back of your knee so that your quads are active and your hamstrings are active, fronts and the backs of your legs active as you flow. Um, have two blocks handy. You might need them on their higher heights or lower heights, depending on um, the length of your hamstrings. Okay, so coming to stand at the front of your mat, have your blocks handy there. Palms of your hands together. Lower abdomen in and up, so you're aligning from your centre body. Upper buttock flesh descends down towards your heels. Shoulder blades into your back body, heart space open. Inhale, reach your arms up, palms touching, lengthen, look up, keep space behind your neck. Exhale, dive forward, lower abdomen in and up. Inhale, open your collarbones, flatten your hands down, lower abdomen in and up, Udiyana Bandha, lean into your hands and then step or jump, Adhyayana Swanasana. Inhale, come forward into Palakasana. Remember your belt around your elbows. Chakaranga Dandasana, lower abdomen in and up. Inhale, Uttho Mukha Svanasana. Draw your knees up, upper buttocks down, heart space open. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So from Adho Mukha Svanasana, turn your left heel flat at the back of your mat, toes turned out to the side. Bring your right knee in towards your chest and float your foot forward. So a little connection there. And then straighten both your legs. If you feel a little bit unstable in your midline, then you can walk your right foot a little more over to your right so that you've got whip between your feet. Either using your blocks underneath your hands, whichever height you need them, or being on your fingertips or with your hands flat, lengthen the front of your spine, pubic bone to brace bone. Inner thighs rolling back to draw your lower abdomen in and up so you get that Udiyana Bandha. Shoulder blades into your back body, your heart space open. And then make sure that your leg is active, especially your right leg. Drawing the thigh up, bending the back of your knee slightly. And then with that length in your spine, fold forward over that right leg. And still keeping the collarbones open, inner thighs rolling back, lower abdomen in and up, breathe into it. If you need to take a break, you can always bend that right knee a little bit more, take a moment. And then slowly coming back up with your chest. So now you can either use this um, block on your right side, on whichever height you need it, or you just bring your left hand flat on the outside of your right foot. The um, forearm connecting your shin bone to use that as a fulcrum and we're going to twist to the right. Have your right hand on your hip, open your chest to the sky and you either stay there or you reach your right arm up to the sky, moving your left shoulder blade more towards your right foot, lengthen through your crown of your head, lower abdomen in and up, see if you can find that Uriyana Bandha here. Take another moment. And then either keeping your right arm up or bringing the hand down onto your hip. Bend your right knee a little bit. Move your left hand over to your left side. You can always take a block or be on your fingertips. Before you move into um, a Parivita Adha Chandrasana, lower abdomen in and out. And then slowly making the transition, that left hand slightly out to the side and forward. Lift your left leg up. Spiral your chest open to the side. Either looking towards your right hand or down to the earth. Lower abdomen in and up. Breathe. And then from there, slowly landing back into Parivita um, Tikonasana. Now take a moment to land, breathe. I know that that right leg is working strongly. 
See if you can still bend the knees slightly, but activate the thigh. Exhale your hands down to the earth. Step back into Adamantha Svanasana. And then bring your feet together at the back of your mat and take a little rest in Balasana. Let your arms relax completely. You can come back into Adumukha Svanasana, inner thighs rolling back, lower abdomen inward and upward. Inhale, wave forward into Panakasana, plank pose. Keep that connection. And again, you can either drop your knees down to the earth like we did in Chaturanga when we were working with the belt, or straight legs. Imagine that belt around your elbows, elbows back, chest forward, come onto your tippy toes. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, lower abdomen moving inward and upward. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then the left side, so we're going to turn your right heel flat at the back of your mat to the center line, toes out to the side, left knee into your chest, step the foot forward, float it forward. And again, your stability comes if you just make your feet a little bit broader, like wider out to the sides of your mat. Then straighten your left leg, and that thigh going up, but a slight little micro bend from the back of your knee. So the legs are strong. Find the length in your spine, pubic bone to brace bone. Inner thighs rolling back as you draw your lower abdomen inward and upward. And then whip that length, shoulder blades into your back body. Remember, you can use your blocks if you need them. Exhale to fold forward, keeping that inner connection. Align yourself from the inside out. Take a moment just to become quiet here. Stay with your breath. And then once again, coming up, keep the length in your spine. Keep your legs strong and steady. And then from here, either using your block on the outside of your left foot or bring your hand, your right hand flat on the outside of that left foot. You're connecting the forearm to the shin bone. Lower abdomen goes in and up, so you keep that stability. Left hand onto your hip to spiral open. And then you can either keep your hand on your hip or reaching that left arm up to the sky. Maybe even looking up to that top hand or otherwise down to the earth. Make sure that that left leg is still stable. Bring your right shoulder blade towards your left foot. Lower abdomen in and up. So you've got Udi and Abanda lengthen through the crown of your head. So you can either keep that left arm up or bring your hand onto your hip. Bend that left knee a little bit. Either using your block or bring your right fingertips over to the side and forward. And then slowly, before you go up, lower abdomen in and up, get that connection, and then slowly lifting that right leg up, spiral around the central axis of your body, breathe into that left leg, I know it's strong, see if you can align yourself from the inside out, and then slowly landing back into Parivika Trikonasana. Once again, opening up one more breath there. Exhale your hands down to the earth. Step back into Adamukha Svanasana. Feet together and again come to rest in Balasana. Nice full, deep, spacious breaths as you release. And here you can either replay this and repeat the sequence if you feel that you would like to really work into all of those connections and explore that connecting from the inside outward and work with the joints where you really plug in the leg bones, the arm bones into the sockets but at the same time creating space or you can finish the sequence and then, and then come back at another point. Okay, so to finish our sequence today, we're going to um, complete the practice with um, shoulder stand. Just if you do have any neck issues, then um, first consult uh, one of your health practitioners.
position is before you do the shoulder stand, unless you know that it's okay for your neck. Um, in the practice of shoulder stand, make sure that you keep your neck in one straight line, very important. If you have high blood pressure, it's not a very good idea to go upside down for a prolonged period of time. So you might want to just touch and then, and then release out of it. But um, in general, it's not recommended to practice this um, particular pose if you have high blood pressure. And in that case, or if you menstruating or if you are pregnant. So in that um, instance, what you can do is just bring your legs up against the wall like this. So just lying against the wall and relaxing. Okay, otherwise you're going to use your blanket just to give your neck a little bit of space. And so we'll leave a section at the front of the mat just for your head. Take a smooth edge of your blanket on your head side and then fold the rest of your mat over the blanket and just leave a little part so that it doesn't, um, so that the mat doesn't um, connect your neck, so that your neck is on a soft part. Your belt is already the right size, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to bring the elbows um, together so that they don't slide out to the side, which is what often happens in shoulder balance. So you might want to have a look first, and then as I stay in the posture, then come in after me. So you're going to have your belt around one of your arms to come to lie down and lie down so that your tops of your shoulders are a thumb's distance away from the edge of um, the, the end of the blanket. Just so that when you roll over, your shoulders are still on the blanket and your head is off. Make sure that your neck stays in a straight line hands down to the earth, fingers down to the earth. And then for those of you who um, have uh, hamstrings that are maybe not that open, it could be a good idea to have a wall behind you so, or a chair on which you can bring your legs for halasana. So bringing your hands down, legs up to the sky, bring your legs up and over your head. So here you might want to put your feet on a chair or against a wall. Interlace your fingers behind your back and then just slowly rock onto the tops of your shoulders so you turn your inner upper arms out, outer upper arms roll down to the earth. Lower abdomen and in and up, see if you can find your Uddiyana Bandha, rolling your inner thighs up to the sky, lower abdomen moving in towards your spine and in the direction of your chest. And then after you stay there for a few breaths, then bringing your belt around your elbows and once again just interlace your hands. So we'll wait here for those of you who need to set yourself up. Nice long, deep, spacious breaths. Check in that your eyes are soft, your tongue relaxed. And please at any point feel that you can come down if you need to come down. Just make sure that you release your belt first, that you take your belt off. Okay, otherwise your belt is on. Then bend your elbows, bring your elbows down to the earth, hands onto your back. Support your back with your hands as close to your shoulder blades as you can. Keep your legs straight. Lower abdomen inward and upward and use that lower abdominal connection to bring one leg at a time up to the sky. Make sure there's equal weight on your elbows and on your shoulders so that the weight is evenly distributed on your upper arms. Lift and lengthen through your inner legs up to the sky. So pelvic floor connecting inward and lower abdomen connecting inward and in the direction of your chest. Your inner thighs are rolling back away from your face. Your inner groins to your inner ankles lifting up to the sky. And then 
a nice full spacious breath. Just feeling that you're connected from the inside outward to the periphery. Take a few moments to find that lightness of being. That feeling of having found union in the joints of your body, especially in your central channel, especially in your spinal cord. And through that inner union, union throughout your whole body and also in your mind. So with that lower abdominal connection into your spine and in the direction of your chest, See, can you squeeze your legs together, roll your inner thighs away from your face, and then maybe you can bring both legs down into Halasana. Change the interlock of your fingers so that the other pinky finger comes underneath and draw your hands down to the earth. Make sure your neck stays straight. Then with one of your hands, just remove the belt from the opposite elbow. Remove the belt completely. Bring your hands down onto the earth. That lower abdominal area drawing in towards your spine and in the direction of your chest. Use that to slowly unroll yourself. Knees in towards your chest. Land with your knees bent, feet flat onto the earth. Relax your arms, relax your whole body. And then reach your right arm up beside your ear. Roll onto your right side. Rest your cheek on your upper arm. Just take a moment. Press your left hand down into the earth. Slowly come up to seated. And then unfold your mat for Shavasana. So for your Shavasana, so for your Shavasana, fold your blanket in double for your head. If you feel any strain in your lower back, what you can do is when you lie down, you can just take your two blocks underneath the thighs and let that release your lower back. So when you lie down, make sure that your um, whole neck is supported by your blanket. So the blanket comes to the tops of your shoulders. Your whole neck is supported by the blanket. And then from there, if you want, you slide your uh, bricks, your blocks, underneath your thighs and you just get that slight moving of your upper buttock flesh towards your heels and then let your legs release out to the side, let your arms relax out to the side, palms of your hands facing up. Take a few full exhalations through your mouth to release. Surrender and let go. Once you've taken a few full exhalations, let your eyes soften and surrender your whole body to the earth. Feeling of really dropping into your own internal essence, dropping into that union with yourself, and through that union with yourself, into the union with others and the world around you.
please take as much time as you need in your Shavasana. It's good to lie for at least three minutes if you can. But once you feel it's enough, and just very gently bend your elbows, bring your hands either to your abdomen or your chest. Bend your knees to step your feet onto the earth. And move your blocks to your left side. Reach your right arm up beside your ear. And just roll onto your right side. Rest your cheek on your upper arm. Take a few moments here. Let your eyes softly open up. Press your left hand into the earth and slowly bring yourself up with your head last to come to seated in a comfortable seat. So for the closing part, uh, once again you can come to sit on your two blocks with one heel in front of the other heel and setting yourself up. You can remember change your legs, just do whatever feels most natural, letting the knees descend down, move your buttock flesh backward, use your blankets under your knees if you need that, and then bring the palms of your hands to touch at your heart, just feeling that union of physical energy inside you and that penetrating to a deeper subtle level where you feel union in your mind and union in your energetic body and that extending to union with those around you nature and the world around you. It's holding this feeling of union very sacredly as we tune out with one chant of Om. Exhale completely. Inhale deeply. Thank you for joining me for this practice today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your morning, your afternoon.